about him being born in a gypsy camp in Lower Silesia in 1904, but uh, he rejected that introduction. So we'll, we'll have to go with the real, the real facts for uh, a change here. Anyway, Don is from Spring, Texas, which is a suburb of Houston. And he escaped Houston to escape the crime, and the crime followed him anyway, which is what it seems to do in those parts. He's uh, an engineer by background, worked as a petroleum geologist for many years. About eight years ago, he uh, got out of that field, and that gave him time to start working with physics and free energy and chemistry and things he really wanted to do. Sometimes he works with the local school systems down in Texas, he teaches physics and chemistry and other subjects for the kids there. And uh, he's doing quite a job, and he's been investigating various aspects of free energy, which he's going to uh, give you a big presentation about today. So please welcome Don Smith. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me out there? I, I hope everything's turned on. Uh, can you hear me now? Okay. Uh, you're not going to be disappointed today. <laughs> uh, since we uh, met last year, I realized that there are a lot of people that uh, had trouble uh, understanding things unless you could uh, turn the wall switch on, and that was the extent of it. So uh, uh, this uh, particular speech is built around that uh, particular aspect of it, plus uh, the fact that I'm going to give you a lot of backup information, which uh, uh, you would probably never in a lifetime find if you went looking for it yourself. Uh, you just have to kind of fall into the, some of this stuff uh, with dumb luck, and it seems like uh, every time I've gone around the corner, there was something waiting there, which was what I was looking for. Now. Uh, those of you that have seen the article and the recent, uh, the present issue of the Tesla magazine uh, will have a lot of the theory that's here, and I will uh, sort of bounce through that. And uh, uh, the speech is not written, so uh, we'll have to work off of that particular aspect of it. Uh, what I'll do is go through some uh, photographs here, and if we can dim the lights down, uh, let's see what we can do with them. Okay, uh, it probably need to be a little dimmer. Uh, okay, uh, can you see that? Okay. Uh, Okay, I'm going to walk you through the different parts on this. This is actual commercial model, and it's 30 kVA, and uh, it's not very large. It's uh, a little bit heavy because of the uh, copper in the transformer. But uh, the transformer is driven by an inverter, which is here, which runs off of 12 volts and kicks it up to 112 uh, volts and that in turn comes through the uh, through a variable deal that's very similar to what you have on the light dimmer in your house except that won't work in this case uh, it's a special uh, dimmer that's made for a neon tube uh, transform to work with neon tube transformers and it, you can vary it from one volt to whatever you have like 112 volts so that means basically that the forward going part of it uh, going into the, uh, you have a couple of 200 amp diodes here, one on each side. There's one here and then there's one there. And uh, in this particular case, uh, the diodes are not critical. They're silicone, but they're good for uh, several thousand volts and uh, 200 amps. I believe you're standing in front of the projector. Is that what's wrong? Does that work better? Okay. Uh, it goes from these uh, diodes, it becomes pulsating DC at this point, and uh, one diode will give you a sawtooth pattern, 
the second one there kicks in when the it will kick in and cause the other one to kick out at a certain point. So you have a continuous uh, uh, pulsating uh, DC on a straight line instead of a sawtooth uh, type arrangement. That goes to these uh, uh, 30,000 volt uh, uh, capacitors that are there. And uh, they're set up to take uh, hundreds of amps. And their their lifetime uh, lifetime uh, capacitors are self healing, and uh, I'll show you in a little bit uh, the reading on one end of them. This is the transformer, and uh, it may be dark, but uh, you can possibly see what's going on. Okay, uh, the closest to you here is your inverter. In this case, it's uh, it's about 240 watts the inverter. It goes into a 15,000 volt uh, uh, neon tube transformer. The neon tube transformer on each end here is kicking out the same amount uh, where those uh, knobs are. There's one on each end. One uh, each one goes to uh, one of the diodes. Okay. And the earth ground on this is here. So this fulfills something which we are going to talk about after a little while. Uh, there are many ways to wind coils. You can wind them where they, you have voltage only or where you have very little amperage or where you have 100% amperage and, and very low voltage. And uh, the winding, the way the coils are wound will determine what you get. It has nothing at all to do with the fact that what you're putting in is, say, strict voltage to begin with. It's going to come out to, after it goes through a certain type of coil system. And with this center ground thing here, you're guaranteed that you're going to get, uh, going to get amperage. Okay, there'll be a break at uh, 10, 15, uh, and you'll have to let me know when that time comes because I won't be able to watch the clock from up here. Okay, there's a lot of these uh, photographs, so we need to... Uh, let's see, we saw this one just now, or have we seen this one yet? What we're going to do is walk around this... Uh, commercial we're going to walk around the commercial model and look at it from different angles and uh, you see the, uh, the 200 amp uh, diodes sticking through these cooling fans and you see the takeoff uh, from the, those two going up to the capacitor so it's going to be a lot uh, a lot simpler than uh, the one you're looking at on the floor here. Okay, here's the same thing from a slightly different view. And uh, below here you see a radio frequency uh, high voltage probe that goes into a, a meter that measures uh, high voltage at high frequencies. Uh, there's about uh, 20 of these uh, sheets, and then we'll go to some other things. See those? Okay, we're going to take a look at one end of them now. And if you got your glasses on, you can uh, gather a good bit of information from this. You notice the point of origin there is Finland. So that gives you some idea of where those uh, 
uh, pastors came from. They're self-healing, if you notice, and uh, they're also... Uh, I have some other characteristics. It's got the KVA written on there, if you can read it. But the combined uh, KVA of those uh, two capacitors is about 30,000. And the fact that the device that your your input is about 12 volts at uh, maybe uh, 30 milliamps or something like that. And... Uh, uh, that goes into the uh, uh, inverter, and the inverter is tuned back so that only a tiny bit of that is going forward. So uh, whenever you come to the output, you basically sent forward maybe two or three volts, and you're getting back, say, 30,000 kVA. So uh, uh, the uh, computer program that I like to use with this type of situation it won't work with this one, but it will work with that one down there, and we'll talk about it a little bit. But I sit down and for days run computer programs on these things before I even start building them, and then I correct as I go along. I start taking readings as I go along, and then I start building corrections into the device. And uh, we'll see that in some detail in a little bit. Okay, we're going to the one that's on the floor down in front of us. And uh, let's see what happened here. There we go. See that okay? Okay, the parts of this uh, particular device here uh, up to this point right here is uh, what you're already familiar with. Now there's two or three things that are built into this which are uh, new and different from what you might be thinking about. Here's the uh, inverter again, a smaller sized one. Here's the variable uh, device on the end. It's coming into a neon tube transformer which is here. That neon tube transformer has two uh, out high voltage outputs. Those two things are brought over to here and uh, underneath here, and they're joined together by a couple of diodes, so the high voltage output is going through uh, this one right here and coming in at the base of the coil that's inside the spring there. And it's coming out at the top end and coming back this way and going to here. There's a lightning uh, uh, volt uh, protector here that's serving as the case of the uh, spark gap. So there's not a spark gap as uh, anything that you would recognize. Okay, uh, once you get over to this point here, two things have happened. One, the, uh, I calculated the uh, L1 coil, which is on this sliding uh, two inch PVC tube inside the three inch uh, coil. Uh, it was calculated to be one-fourth the length of the wire that's involved in this L2 coil or the outer coil. And the reason for that is that coils have uh, both capacitance, inductance, and resistance. And uh, all those things uh, play part in the tuning of the thing. But since you start out with about one-quarter length of the uh, uh, longer coil, uh, you're pretty much tuned. You're almost tuned immediately. And as it turned out, uh, of course, you have to put a capacitor on one of the two coils. <coughs> the easier one to work with is the L1 coil over here. And uh, you can put a capacitor in there that will correct for any slight difference that might be. Those things are usually into the, uh, like, uh, uh, one-tenth of a microfarad or something along that line. Uh, and uh, as it turned out, when I put that thing in and then I took a, a reading on the circuit, well, it turned out that I had a 0.5, uh, 6,000 uh, volt capacitor that I could put over here, and I had an exact tune on this thing. Even though sliding this coil in and out is meant as a tuning device, I could have tuned it by doing that. But as it turned out, uh, the thing uh, was exactly tuned without even moving the thing by using the particular combination of capacitors that I used. Okay, with that in mind, uh, the next thing is that uh, 
in order to have useful energy, you can't go directly from uh, this call system uh, and use it. Uh, you have to have some way of storing it, and uh, the storing options are basically either battery or capacitors. And uh, as it turns out, uh, uh, capacitors are, we'll come back to that later, capacitors are probably the best option because they can be built to where they're self-healing, they can be built to where they have over 40 years of useful life that's known. They've tested some of them and they know that they will last 40 years without uh, any sort of damage if used in a proper manner. So uh, a battery uh, has a useful life of about a thousand cycles. So if you're going to uh, use a battery system, you're going to be changing your batteries uh, pretty often if you're going to be using a lot of electricity because uh, you're going to be cycling them uh, quite often. The capacitor, however, does not wear out. Uh, it uh, cycles at millions and millions of cycles a second, and it goes well beyond uh, 40 years. So uh, that's the correct option, and I'll show you a chart later on uh, from one of the battery manufacturers that backs me up on that. It, we're going to another, uh, another photograph here. And that's Okay, we're looking. We're walking around this one. We're going to walk uh, sort of a circle around it and see what's there. Uh, we were talking about uh, the uh, variable uh, neon variable trans uh, neon variable deal for letting the amount making the tubes brighter or dimmer. Uh, it's made different than the dimmer switch that's in your uh, house. So. Uh, don't, you can switch the two, but you probably come to grief if you use the house dimmer. These things are uh, maybe 30 bucks a piece, depending on where you're at. Of course, here's the uh, uh, neon tube transformer, and it's, a, uh, it's built with an earth ground coming out on the other end there. So it's center tapped, which means it, it has uh, capability of making amperage for you. Without that center tap, you wouldn't have the amperage uh, available to you as you a matter of fact you as you lower the voltage in the amperage goes up on this thing so if you run it at less than 110 volts on this inverter here uh, and then you back it off again with the variable deal uh, uh, you're going to end up with uh, in some cases more amperage than the device can handle so you can melt it <laughs> And you can see the uh, outside uh, coil here. The center part of it is missing uh, some turns. I took the turns out of the center part of it, and the, uh, basically the electrons are moving this way, and the uh, uh, electrons moving this way, and then the out, uh, the tail back there that hooks the two together and goes to an earth ground is where your amperage uh, comes in. So whenever you take your uh, amps and volts apart and you start bringing them back together you get volts times amps equal watts so that's your useful energy and you do this as you go into the capacitor bank so uh, coulombs and watt seconds are uh, all uh, basically one coulomb and one volt second is basically one volt at one amp at one second so they're all the same thing sir is that solid state? Uh, this one looks like it's solid state, but it performs as though it's not. Uh, being solid state, I'm not quite sure what it would do to it, but I've used them, and for some reason they work. I don't uh, quite know why the reason is, but I do know they, they still work, and this one looks like a solid state because that's 9,000 volt, uh, 9, volt uh, transformer, the small one that's there. See that? That's 9,000 volts right there. And uh, if you look at the label on this thing, you're in for a surprise because uh, if you, they tell you that there's so many volts in and, and uh, at so many amps and so many volts out at so many amps, it turns out that this, this device right here uh, is an over-energy device uh, very noticeably because uh, if you uh, look at the information on the one that's down here, you're looking at the one that's on the floor. 
So if you take the numbers off of the uh, thing, the, the volts in and the amps in and the volts out and the amps out, that little device uh, has produced uh, a noticeably more energy than it had going into it. So it's already beginning to behave as an over-energy device. And they actually stamped it on the label. Uh, there's no, they don't say that it does that, but just uh, uh, the guys that are curious can uh, find out for themselves if they want to. So, uh, hey, we're going to move up uh, closer on uh, some of the photographs now and take a, a little bit closer look at some of the components that uh, are on the device that we were just looking at. Uh, There you go. Okay, I have no way of uh, knowing what you're seeing out there because I'm blinded by the lights up here. And I'm simply trying to stay out of your way, so if you're not seeing something, you need to let me know. Uh, no, this thing is kind of... Uh, uh, it's... Uh, uh, it could be that these lights back here are messing things up, but but uh, we can't really turn those off because uh, they're making a tape of this, and uh, if they turn them off, uh, you'll just have the voice and what's here, and there won't be any speaker. <laughs> so, anyhow, uh, see. there we go. Okay, you see the uh, L1 coil here. It's three inch uh, Baker. Williamson coil. It's had the four turns taken out of the center here, and they're made into a pigtail, which uh, forms the uh, ground, uh, the negative ground out, or the amperage end of the deal. Uh, on the ends here, uh, they're coming off and, and going out and coming through. This is a series of, uh, of very high voltage uh, capacitors that are normally found in. Uh, flyback transformer uh, circuits and televisions. Uh, uh, so we're into very high voltage on those uh, diodes. And uh, basically what they're doing is what the two diodes were doing in the other device. Uh, they're taking a sawtooth uh, pattern and changing it into uh, a flat pulsating uh, DC at very high voltage. Uh, it's coming out of there and there's two outs here one is uh, whipping around and coming across here to here, and then it's going to the output over here, which uh, there's a coil system. Uh, you see a double coil system there, and it's going through this first coil system, and uh, at that point, it's smoothing it out is what it's doing. And then it's going on to the output block, which is back there. At that point, you're ready to go to the transformer. Okay, this wire here has very interesting characteristics. Uh, uh, it's an uh, extremely high voltage wire. It has a, a thick layer of silicone over it, and then it's got a, another envelope over that on the outside that looks like, a, a, looks like a, a clear plastic. But it has, uh, some of these wires that I use have over 80,000 volts uh, breakdown on them. So in the bottom one down here is the same same type of wire, same manufacturer, but it's a different color. And uh, what what it does is basically uh, a pick up. Uh, it doesn't come over t to the device here. It really uh, stops on the on this end of the device and goes this way, and uh, then it becomes the uh, the output on the negative uh, side there. So uh, you've got your very high potential one, and then you've got your other. You've got two of them, and the sense of plus and minus, which you normally think of, you really don't want to uh, think of it here. You want to say that uh, one area is higher pressure uh, electricity, and another area is lower pressure. And uh, since the electrons are in an awkward position, they will uh, try to get back uh, to. Uh, ambient and the process of getting back to ambient they're going to be doing the things that you want them to do 
It's just like water that uh, rains on the side of a mountain. It's going to find its way back to the ocean. So once you get the energy balance uh, uh, working for you, uh, then you're on, you're on your way. Okay. Um, let's see. Can we go back to the slide, or do I need to do it? There we go. Okay, we're looking at it from another angle, and uh, you can very easily make these uh, the complete system out of a three-inch piece of PVC. The one that's on the inside here is a two-inch out uh, OD uh, PVC, and uh, it's got the windings for the uh, L1 coil on it, as you can see through it. And the reason for putting it on the uh, slide deal is the fact that that becomes a tuning device. If your device is not uh, properly tuned, uh, uh, which uh, you can build it without taking any measurements or doing anything simply by calculating the length of wire that's in the L1 coil and then taking one-fourth of that and measuring a piece of wire and then using that for your L1 coil. And uh, you will be very close to the uh, tune almost going into it without any capacitors or anything. But you're going to probably want to put at least a capacitor either on your L1 or your L2. It's much simpler to put it on the L1. But if you put it on uh, both of them, of course, you're kicking, uh, kicking the voltage up in both cases. And uh, it doesn't take, uh, it takes high, high voltage uh, capacitors, which are a little bit hard to come by. The ones that I have here were custom made for me by Cornell Dubier. And, uh, find them in a catalog anywhere. So they're uh, custom run. And uh, uh, the diodes are also uh, not available that I used, uh, except on the, the large ones, the 200 amp ones. Those are commercial variety. But the diodes on the machine that we're looking at here, uh, there's no way on earth that you would probably end up getting those diodes, unless you get them from me. I've got quite a few of them. And you have to order uh, large number of them in order to get a run on them. And uh, they stopped making this particular diode uh, back in 1993. Yeah? I have a question back here? Uh, I can hardly hear you. Uh, I, I don't hear you, but a little bit later we'll... Uh, open the floor up and uh, if you come back at me at that point well I'll give you an answer okay uh, you see something here which uh, uh, people say can't happen uh, uh, if you notice the double call system uh, this is the active one going through here and going out to the uh, transformers and uh, this one is not hooked into the system except magnetically. And it becomes has the same activity as this one even though it's not hooked into them due to the magnetic flux uh, working on it. So what that tells you is that this separate coil here is not using any energy, but it's generating energy which you can charge your, keep your batteries charged with so that your batteries never run down. But this is one of about uh, half a dozen different ways of doing that, uh, recharging your battery. Uh, the way which I normally prefer is uh, I calculate the length of the wire from the battery to the input into the device. So that it's one quarter wavelength of the uh, L1 coil. And uh, for that reason, it uh, picks up the radio frequency and it is uh, with the diode, kickback diode there, it forces the have a high frequency electricity back into the battery and the high frequency electricity is charging while the DC is coming out and actually it's doing a better job of charging than the, the outcome. So uh, uh, the batteries, some of the ones that I've used, I've had for more than two years and used them continuously with almost everything imaginable and they measure the 12.97 uh, uh, volts uh, exactly like they did two years earlier uh, today.
So uh, uh, I may not completely understand why that happens, but it, I know that it does. Uh, I have trouble hearing to begin with, and uh, it, uh, if you'd like to come up closer, uh, uh, that may be the way to solve it. If you'll come up near the corner here where I can hear you, uh, okay. Is it, are your batteries lead acid storage? Uh, they're calcium uh, uh, lead. They're uh, sealed uh, batteries. They're a very common sort that you find. and. Uh, they're not one which uh, spills out the material, and the idea that they can only be recharged uh, 100 times uh, apparently does not necessarily apply. We'll come back to that a little bit later. But the battery manufacturer says that that's what will happen, so, uh, but I don't find it uh, happening. Okay, we have another one here. Oops. Okay, you can see that one. It's a little bit better shot of the <coughs> piece of PVC. Of course, uh, I very carefully uh, sand these things so there's no markings on them. It looks like a, it doesn't look like PVC at all. If you notice, whenever you see the real device, uh, it looks uh, like it was meant to be what it is. And again, uh, we're looking at the. Uh, neon tube transformer with the two high voltage outputs and then we're looking at the uh, block here which has two uh, high voltage diodes here and it has these capacitors here the capacitors are between the the uh, where these two come together and they pass through the uh, diodes is between that point and the the negative or the earth ground which is uh, is on the end uh, there's a little screw on the end of this block, which is the center tap or the earth ground deal. And that's the thing that ensures your uh, uh, amperage whenever you get to that. Uh, we'll go into the various kinds of coil windings in a little bit and uh, see what uh, happens there. There we go. There you can see the uh, block, and you, you can't, uh, I don't believe that you can see the two diodes, but you, they're there. See? High voltage diodes. And there's one on each of these outlets to the high voltage uh, side of the uh, transformer. And then once it becomes uh, DC, well, then I tie the uh, capacitors across that DC and where the earth, the earth ground comes back through here and where the uh, lightning arrestor is, where it returns to the, this is your earth ground right here, uh, where it returns to the uh, uh, transformer. This is another angle of it. This is the variable deal. Uh, the plug socket, uh, the uh, inverter, the lightning arrestor and the earth ground, which has to go to, has to be tied to an external earth ground. And uh, here's the point where it goes forward to into the uh, L1 on the bot bottom side. And here's where it comes back from the L1 on the top side into the earth ground. see where I cut holes and the device here, the bottom one goes underneath and comes up to here and then comes through and then goes around this thing and then goes back inside and then comes back through this one to the earth ground. Yes, sir? John, you did something just in that way up to put it on there that made it look darker. Uh, can you tell me what, what it is? I don't know. There's black and white and... Uh, 
negative and uh, automatic and whole. You push the button there, which one did you push? Uh, the one that brings it on is over here. I'm trying to turn it back to the way you had it. Okay, would you like to come around here and show me? Uh, that one, uh, I don't, we may not be able to use that one, it's too dark. Which one did you do? Uh, the one that's up there now. Uh, it, it's not showing any detail on it. Let me go back to the other one and you, now see if you can make it to work. Is that brighter? No, no. That one? No. Will that be okay? No. Here, I really can't see it very well, so. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well, we're, we're zipped right on through these, and we've got so many other things to talk about that you can't believe it. Uh, uh, one of the things which we're going to be seeing is uh, this device. And uh, it's a one quarter uh, uh, size uh, version of the one that we've just been looking at. It's built in this uh, suitcase. It actually only takes up the top half of it. The suitcase is mostly empty. Well, that gives you some idea of the size. It was just a little bit uh, too long to put into an ordinary briefcase, and that's why I went to the suitcase. But it, the suitcase has wheels on it and rolls and has a handle that pops out, and uh, that makes it real easy for me to carry with me when I go overseas and other places uh, with this. Here you can see the uh, the handle. I guess. Well, maybe you can. <laughs> okay, well, we're going on to something else. We we have uh, so many things to look at that you can't believe. Okay. Okay, there's it uh, is standing up uh, in the den at home. And uh, I have four of these fans that I normally use, but uh, due to space limitations, I only brought one. Okay, there's... Uh... Okay, it's too dark. It's too dark. Okay, let's see something else. Uh, these are some of the uh, some of the tools uh, sitting beside uh, the large capacitors that we were talking about a while ago that came from Finland. Yes, sir. What does what do? This particular one. What? To how much output? Oh, those instruments. Okay, we're going to we're going to uh, take the suitcase and play with it in a little bit. Uh, it has a uh, complete unit in it that's fully functional and does everything that uh, anyone uh, would imagine. Uh, uh, basically, what I've done is reduced it to an off and on switch, uh, which is the level which seems uh, most people seem to be interested in. So uh, I'm going to accommodate those fellows in a little bit. And we're going to run some tests on it to see for sure that it's doing what I'm saying it's uh, capable of. Okay, uh, here's that uh, radio frequency uh, high voltage uh, meter that the probe that we saw earlier was hooked on to. And uh, those are Hewlett Packard instruments that we've seen. There's more of them. So uh, this is just for you fellows that uh, uh, are thinking that somebody fell out of a tree sort of thing. And I might mention that uh, 
you see the high voltage probe uh, with it for high frequency high voltage probe and then here's some of the other instruments they're calling that uh, center one it goes to 600 amps uh, plus or minus so there's a 1200 amp uh, spread on it yes the schematic of this uh, uh, at this point uh, uh, I'm going to be talking about this up to a certain point and then I'm going to uh, there's going to be a wall put up and that's about as far as I'll go because this thing is highly commercial it's uh, in uh, more than half the world right now it's being manufactured and the uh, monetary interest which I have in it is substantial and it's not to my advantage to to be uh, overly uh, talkative. I'll try to be direct, straight, and uh, so that you know that it's really happening. And if you're real sharp, uh, you can probably figure the parts that I'm not telling you out. So uh, uh, that's to eliminate the competition, which uh, basically probably doesn't. I don't need to worry about that because. Uh, the backing which I have is of such a nature that there's nobody in the world that can compete with me anyhow. So uh, it would be foolish for anyone, regardless of how big they think they are, to even try. Okay, uh, the, most of you probably got your uh, Tesla magazine this year. and. Uh, the current issue, and uh, on page, uh, starting on page 33, uh, there's a, what was 26 pages uh, printed by laser printer has been reduced down to about five pages, and it has a lot of update information which will tell you why these uh, things will work and why the, uh, it basically blows the uh, conventional approach to electricity uh, out the window completely and forever and in a way which it can never get back in because if you read the article uh, you will never be able to go back to where you were before so if that makes you uncomfortable you don't want to read it okay we're going into some of the other background that led into this thing uh, uh, Hey, there are a number of publications in Europe which, uh, uh, in Europe, they don't uh, take such a dim view of what I'm trying to do. Uh, okay, those of you that can read uh, French, I'll move this up a little bit. And we're going to uh, skip through a book that was published quite some time ago. And we're going to show you some devices which have... Uh, predominantly amperage and not uh, necessarily voltage and they look a lot like the Tesla coils which you're accustomed to see. There's a reason for that and we'll go into it in a little while. But uh, this particular fellow, de Arsonville, was the one that gave us the uh, uh, thing for looking at heartbeats and uh, your cardiograms and uh, gave uh, a lot of uh, thermal devices which uh, kill germs. They were using the thermal effect of the high voltage electricity to kill uh, germs back in the 1800s, late 1800s. As a, instead of, they didn't have uh, disinfectants and things at that time, but uh, they were very successful with it. So uh, uh, some of the illustrations from this particular book I'm going to show you and then we'll skip on to get back to English. Uh, the particular book I'm talking about, uh, uh, they're based, there's three copies in the United States. And, uh, okay, that may look uh, somewhat familiar, but uh, if you know the year that it was built, uh, uh, it was built before Tesla was actually building coils. And it has uh, a huge amount of amperage. And it has the center tap, uh, like I'm telling you about on my coil system, uh, which makes it uh, into an amperage voltage and amperage type device. And they had a great deal of difficulty with the amperage because uh, uh, they were uh, all the time... Uh,
Hey, there's another uh, version of this particular coil which was easier to uh, manage. Okay, you see that? Your uh, L2 coil is on the inside of this glass deal with oil in it. Your L1 coil is on the outside. It's not necessarily to have all of those turns that the outside coil had. It could have only maybe a one turn or three or four turns. It actually, by having fewer turns, it kicks the voltage up on the inside one. Instead of, say, having uh, 30,000 volts coming out, if you reduce the number of outside coil turns to about maybe three, uh, you probably would have maybe 100,000 volts or more coming out of that inside uh, thing. Okay, uh, in order to get useful energy, you have to uh, uh, go from the high frequency, high voltage into some sort of uh, storage uh, situation. And uh, in this particular case, uh, the light bulb is being lit uh, with a, what we would like to say is a Tesla coil, which is actually the Arsenville coil. So you can see that the uh, Leyden bottle there is the capacitor, and uh, you see the uh, smaller winding and the larger winding, and then you see the air uh, antenna on one end, and then you have the light bulb sticking out. When you bring your hand close to it, the light bulb lights up. Yes? From this, uh, that was the first sheet that I showed you, and we'll go back to it in a little bit. Uh, it's a book on the Arsenville, and uh, uh, if you read French, you like it. Uh, there's only three copies in the United States, and uh, uh, there one's in the Library of Congress, and I don't know where the other two are. But uh, it's out of print, been out of print since 1930-something. And uh, it uh, one may turn up in your attic somewhere, but uh, uh, that's the only place to look for it, I guess. There's a number of other books uh, uh, written in different languages and uh, European languages, and they go in great detail on this sort of thing. And this is all before uh, Tessio came along. Uh, when Tessio came to Paris uh, uh, on his beginning uh, to come to the United States sort of deal, uh, uh, he um, ran into D. Arsenville and. There's a whole group of people, the Rontgens, the Curies, the Runcoffs, the, and it just goes on and on. There's a long list of people that were working with these uh, high voltage, high frequency coils. And uh, that Tesla saw them for the first time when he came to Paris. And uh, of course he later made one which uh, has high voltage, but no, not much amperage. But uh, we're going to see in a little bit that he knew the difference, and he actually made them both ways. Uh, I'm going to show you the, uh, the picture of one uh, that's in a patent filing, which has all of those things built into it. This is the Arsenville's uh, the first electrocardiographs that were ever made in the world. We need to be watching for 10:15 uh, in case uh, someone would like to help me with that. Okay, uh, this is a set of uh, instruments that are used with the high voltage, high frequency coils. When uh, these sets were manufactured and uh, sold to other doctors and practitioners, and uh, uh, they got a set of uh, these particular kinds of probes, uh, which are basically uh, needles and little uh, flat uh, surfaces which they touch to different spots. Uh, we'll see in just a little bit uh, how that worked. Okay, this is a, an alternating current uh, electric motor from 1840, and uh, which was in common usage in Europe uh, 
this was already out and uh, being in common usage when Tessa was still a little boy. There's a particular person that gets credit for it, and uh, his name is Janobi. Uh, oh, I can't take the last name just now, but uh, he is actually the source of it. Okay, the I, the device when it gets to the doctor's office. Uh, looks like this. It's inside that cabinet and it's got uh, controls for the voltage and the amperage and other things on the top there. You have separate amperage and separate voltage controls. And as to uh, uh, the sophistication of what was inside that uh, cabinet that you're looking at a little bit ago. And this is taking you back into a period uh, uh, you can see that there are spark gaps. Uh, you can see a number of different chokes and uh, variable, uh, see variable uh, thing for controlling the uh, output and other things. This is a coil inside a coil wheel. Yeah, I promised you I would show you what one of these things looked like in use. Uh, okay, here's a fellow getting treated for her rheumatism, I guess. And uh, if nothing else happens, I imagine that. Uh, the sensations that he was feeling where he would forget about his rheumatism. <laughs> Probably that was the least of his worries. So uh, at least in one sense, uh, he felt like he had been cured. Uh, if you feel like you're being left out on questions, well, we really aren't because uh, I'm coming back to all of that uh, very shortly. Here's another version of what the doctor's office would have in it uh, with the controls for the voltage and the amperage on it and other kinds of controls. And uh, here's uh, one of them. Uh, this is actually a, a, a long row of uh, treatment places. Uh, these things were very popular, so uh, and they had a large following. And uh, this was Dr. D. Arsenville, one of his offices. Yeah. Just a second. This is uh, one of the areas in a hotel where D. Arsenville and his uh, helpers uh, performed uh, services for a fee. And uh, he was professor of experimental medicine for the College of uh, France. And uh, he spent most of his time working on uh, just about anything that was not standard. And uh, one of the things he developed, of course, were these uh, thermal uh, usages. Thing. Now, Dr. D. Arsenville also, <coughs> was, he was a real medical doctor and professor of experimental medicine. Uh, this is one of the laboratories which uh, the inside of uh, one of the laboratories which he had. And you can see those uh, high voltage uh, devices there and see a very large uh, Leyden bottle down there with the water in it. The, the bottom thing would uh, be a very large capacitor, see? Just like if you use your swimming pool for a capacitor which you can. <laughs> and uh, you see the very high voltage uh, dividers here. And th this is uh, uh, 
in itself is a device that builds the high voltage to about 5 million volts, I believe. That's what the output of this particular device was. One might gather uh, the Arsonville had a lot of uh, very interesting uh, friends, and uh, uh, these are some of them, if you can read their names. Uh, they probably don't mean much uh, today, but at that time uh, they were heads of state and uh, others. And uh, here's one with his uh, class of students at the college. He's in the center, uh, the fellow in the center. This is 1933. Uh, at that time, he was uh, well into his 80s. And uh, he was still in very good health and involved in a lot of things. But uh, those are some of the people that, uh, some of his helpers at the uh, uh, hospital where he worked, one of the hospitals. This is the uh, corner view of some of the buildings at the College of France, uh, where he was a professor of experimental medicine. Okay, um, we have uh, have here. Uh, the, uh, this is evidence that Tesla knew that the coils could be wound uh, for amperage. And I have to, there's three different illustrations here, but you see the center tap? The uh, device in the middle, or the one with the H on it, is your armature or your uh, spinning deal like you have in a starter motor or uh, in a uh, charger, say an electric charger in an automobile. <coughs> the uh, outlets there, if you notice, uh, one of them, the center tap, is going to be your negative, and the other two are going to be the high voltage output. But what they're basically doing is storing electricity into the system in such a way that these uh, uh, high voltage uh, arc lamps, which are the little uh, over on uh, uh, D there, D, D prime, uh, the little round things, those are all uh, arc lamps. And uh, you can put any number of them there and it will automatically adjust to them. So uh, what is happening in my case, uh, I'm removing that armature there. I'm keeping the center tap, which is the negative, and the two output things. And I'm basically, that becomes my L1 coil. I take my L, I mean the L2 coil, the L1 coil I put in place of the uh, uh, charging device, which is in the center, and by the magnetic radio frequency pulsing of it, I'm running that coil system in the same manner which uh, it's being ran with the uh, generator, uh, conventional generator. Except that what I'm doing runs at a much uh, better rate, and uh, it runs at uh, over energy rates and things like that, which this thing, uh, uh, I don't know why you could calculate it, except that it does have output and it does uh, run uh, devices and do useful work. The center one here is a slightly different uh, arrangement, but it has the center tap, which is uh, important to getting amperage. Uh, it's wound, one, one part of the coil there is wound in one direction, one's wound in another direction. And uh, that means that the one that's going the opposite direction is made to uh, produce amperage instead of voltage. So the top part produces voltage, the bottom part produces amperage, and then there's a second or third way, and then there's about a dozen other ways, but uh, the bottom one will produce a huge amounts of amperage. Uh, it's got a double back on the uh, thing. Yes? On the A on the top one? Top number on the page. Top number on... Three, six, nine, six, one. 
Okay, this is from a book that's available in the store here, The Complete Patents of uh, Nikola Tesla. It's page number eight. So if you want to actually go look and see what it, see that uh, particular book. And it definitely it is not a Tesla coil in the normal sense at all. It does produce uh, amperage and lots of it. I told you that I would uh, show you a bit of information on batteries as to why batteries were not uh, not uh, desirable as a way to store energy with these particular devices. And on the very bottom down there, uh, you have the very best uh, type of batteries that are available. And uh, they're the sealed nickel uh, cadmium batteries and the sealed uh, lead acid batteries. And uh, those have, if you look out to the right there, uh, you see the recycle. They can be recycled between 100 and 300 times for the uh, sealed lead acid, and from 300 times to over 1,000 times for the uh, uh, nickel cadmium. Now, uh, even at 1,000 recycles, uh, uh, this type of device would use that thousand recycles up so fast you can't believe it. So uh, you can pretty well uh, forget about uh, conventional batteries except for short-term experimental type things. Now, uh, that is the reason why I have picked the capacitors instead of batteries uh, for storing the energy in order to get it to uh, do useful work. Last year, and I had a particular illustration which I used, which explained why overunity was possible. Uh, these are three different uh, conditions under which uh, you get resonant circuits. There are other conditions. Uh, the bottom one there is the one which you're really looking for, and if you can see it on your oscilloscope, and uh, you can measure it, and. Uh, I'm going to show you a more detailed breakdown on it next. And uh, you can see that uh, it's building energy. And it builds it up to a certain level, and then uh, you've ha it cuts off, and then it cycles back. The uh, resistor shunt in the middle there is basically what uh, uh, helps cause this uh, cycling effect. It's part of the frequency in the cycling deal along with the capacitor and the inductor, which would be your coil. Uh, when you look at that uh, closer, you can see why, you see what each uh, part of it is that's causing uh, this to happen, what's pulling it out each time. This is your over unity looking at you straight in the face and there's no way to deny it. This is one illustration that I used uh, last year, and if you understand what's going on on this, uh, you can build uh, any kind of, of uh, useful energy device that you want to. This has the, the whole uh, story on it, as a matter of fact. You even see the adjustable uh, 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 deal on the top there where the coil is inserted in it, which is what you see on this uh, thing down here. Uh, you also see the capacitor bank, and uh, you see a, on the number two there, you see a, an actual transformer out there which is changing it to whatever level you want it to be to go on and to useful working. Okay, the one just below there, uh, the, the capacitor or the storage thing is that long narrow thing immediately after you come out of the coil and that's uh, helping feed those light bulbs out there. So a uh, light system with any amount of light bulbs out there uh, 
would uh, work uh, with that type of setup. The bottom one there to the uh, left uh, is uh, basically the way to go. Uh, this, <coughs> excuse me, the center tap there uh, actually becomes your negative and the two output things on those uh, coils become your high voltage thing just like the earlier coil winding that we were talking about. And this type of device is actually the thing that's got two coils on it on my board right there. That's that very same device. So by putting the uh, L1 winding in between those two coils there and hooking up the ground part of this and the two output deals, you've got immediately a working uh, Tesla coil in a very, uh, a very good range with amperage and voltage. Okay, but here's uh, Tessia's deal on lighting up uh, fluorescent light tubes. Uh, he used uh, two metal plates that were behind the draperies that you didn't see and used the basic system that we saw on the top right a while ago uh, to put charge on those two opposing plates and by walking around over the stage, uh, the fluorescent light bulbs and things would light up. Uh, and he also happened to be the inventor of the fluorescent uh, uh, tube. Uh, he had uh, hundreds and hundreds of different. I'm going to show you a uh, large uh, scale Tesla coil, uh, which I did. Okay. Okay, that, what you're looking at there are two 18-inch pieces of 12-inch uh, uh, PVC. There's one on the top and one underneath there that it's sitting on. The thing in the center is the a tub that goes under a whiskey barrel planter, uh, which you, uh, it has rollers on it. I took the rollers off, and it happened to be the right diameter to build the L1 call on. And, of course, it was black, so I changed the color on it. And, this particular one has an output of 400,000 volts, and it has quite a bit of amperage also. The uh, instrumentation that you see below down there, you see the little 12-volt battery sitting beside it. So uh, it's very obvious that uh, if you t take what's out and what's going in, that there's a very large difference between the two. to show you uh, one which was built to demonstrate uh, over unity. Uh, if you have uh, separate uh, coils uh, which are no way connected except through the magnetic flux uh, that are tuned to the same frequency of the output one in the center here, you have the output uh, coil and uh, you see the uh, L1 and the ring around it, and you see the L2 in the center, and it's tuned. The tuning parts are uh, right here. See the the variable capacitor? It's a mica variable mica capacitor, and then there's a uh, variable resistor here, which is in part of the circuit. So that goes back to the circuit I showed you over the over unit thing, over unity thing a while ago where you had a uh, resistivity in there, but when this thing becomes resonant, of course the resistivity all becomes uh, negative, and therefore you've got uh, energy which uh, greater than what you had to begin with. So anyhow, this thing behaves exactly like a radio broadcast station, a very simple uh, radio broadcast station about uh, 18 and uh, 11 or somewhere along through there. These other coils are tuned to the same frequency. So being tuned to the same frequency, this thing they puts out 100,000 volts at a certain amperage. Well, these, uh, regardless of how many of these you put around there, if they're tuned to this one, they're not going to take away from the voltage that's there or the energy that's there. They're going to duplicate it. And the reason is that the electrons that are active here 
are not the same electrons that are active here. Uh, through resonant frequency, uh, those coils are tuned so that they react just like if some, someone taps you on the knee and your foot goes up, uh, sort of deal. Uh, it's now 10:10, 10, 10 and uh, let's see. Uh, I think we're scheduled to break at 10:15. Uh, people think that uh, the electrons go from point A to point B. That is not uh, true at all. Uh, the electrons are activated at point A, and electrons uh, move tremendously slow speeds. So the electrons which are at the generating station at your, in your village are not the electrons which are at your house. When you turn your house switch on, you're grounding the system that is connected and the electrons at your house start acting up and that's where you get your energy at your house. It does not come from the power company. And uh, with that, I believe we'll go ahead and take a break and uh, we'll come back and we, we're just getting started. Okay? to the uh, overhead in just a moment. See it? Okay, uh, those of you that are asking what the basic uh, circuitry on these things uh, boil down to, well, this one is probably easier to understand than uh, some of the ones that we've been looking at. Uh, but uh, the basic idea is present in, in this uh, schematic. You see your number five is your L1. The uh, Three there are the, the first block, the large block that's up uh, parallel with the number five to the left of it is, would be your uh, high voltage transformer, whether it's a uh, laser module or, or whatever. And uh, the spark gap uh, number four there would be the uh, uh, lightning arrestor, which uh, I showed on the other device. And uh, you have a voltage limiting device, which would be uh, number eight is the voltage limiting device on that particular thing to keep it down at a level which uh, you can manage. There's only one diode showing in this case, which uh, is sending forward uh, pulsating uh, DC, a kind of a sawtooth type deal. By hooking another diode down on the bottom corner there, and whipping it back up to the, uh, in front of where the number nine is now, going towards the transformer, you would have uh, a smoothed out uh, pulsating DC, which is what you really want to, to go forward to your transformer. Number 10 is matching the transformer to the frequency which uh, you want it to run at. Once you've taken measurements on number 11 there on the input side, uh, you can calculate uh, what number 10 will be, which will give you 120 cycles per second, which is 60 up and 60 down, which is uh, your 60 uh, cycle electricity, which you're normally accustomed to. Uh, number 12 is a voltage control to keep the thing from getting running away from you and burning the transformer up and those things. Uh, there are many, many different ways to go on this. Uh, 
Another way would be to go with uh, toroidal uh, transformers, and uh, that's what I'm going to show you next. Uh, the same uh, situation set up with uh, a bank of toroidal transformers. And there's almost no end to the uh, types of things that you can come up with. And uh, they all seem to work uh, fairly nicely. We'll take a look at some of the uh, measuring devices uh, which are involved uh, in uh, see that it says that the device will measure to one million volts. It, it goes to 10 megahertz and uh, to, uh, with the proper uh, uh, voltage divider, there's a 400 uh, volt uh, divider that's sitting beside it there. Uh, there are dividers which go up to about uh, 5 million volts. That's the conventional way to measure it. Uh, uh, my preferred way to measure it is with a magnetometer and a, a electroscope, uh, various sorts of devices that measure uh, magnetic uh, fields. And uh, magnetic, the magnetic field is directly related to the amount of amperage that's present. If your amp turns in your coil, uh, uh, represent a, a magnetic field and it's very measurable and it's uh, a very safe way to go. Uh, okay, here's uh, one form of voltage divider. See all the resistors that are hooked in uh, series and parallel and everything else and then you have the uh, uh, the uh, thing on the top there that uh, helps dissipate the energy so that you don't burn everything up. Uh, LCR meters can get uh, pretty sophisticated. Uh, uh, this is one of the uh, more sophisticated ones. That's from Stanford Research uh, Systems in California. Here's uh, for people that just want to find out if this thing, uh, sort of thing can really happen without spending very much money. Uh, here's what 50 bucks will get you. Uh, we were talking about the uh, separate call systems uh, a little bit ago uh, where one was running and the other would uh, uh, copy the amount of uh, power on it without depleting the energy from the first one. Uh, that's what this is made to demonstrate, and it's used in uh, physics classes in uh, high school and college. And uh, what happens is that second block there, which is in no way connected except by the radio frequency, will light a conventional 60 watt uh, electric light bulb. The input on this is one and a half volts over on the left hand side there. One and a half volts input on the left hand side cars that coil system that's on the block on the left side and uh, you can move this other coil uh, some distance away and you can hook an electric uh, light bulb onto it or 60 uh, 
it comes with a 60 volt uh, neon tube which lights up whenever you tune the frequency of the second coil to match the first coil. So that demonstrates one of the, there's the hookup uh, information showing uh, how the two blocks uh, work. So that's your basic wireless transmission of energy uh, device. This is one of the early ones uh, showing the uh, transistor that's being uh, oscillated by the, the capacitor, variable capacitor, and variable resistor in the back of it. And uh, the number seven thing actually happens to be a, a high voltage uh, transformer. That could be your uh, uh, the one from the television set, the kick flyback transformer from a television. It can be the a transformer from an automobile, one of the early ones, and uh, uh, the number six down there is basically an off and on switch down at the very bottom in the middle. Uh, it uh, causes coil or number nine there to react, which in turn uh, number uh, 11 over there uh, can be tuned by the grounding uh, uh, capacitor so that uh, it will match the number nine deal and it will become active so your energy will be coming out on uh, number 12 there at the top and the bottom one down below. Now you can center, center tap this thing and you'll have your amperage and hook it up like we were talking about. Now this is the one that uh, postage card uh, size one that will run an automobile. from, uh, say, uh, maybe a six volt battery, a uh, flashlight battery, not an uh, automobile battery. And it's one that can also uh, uh, recharge the battery so that uh, the battery basically never runs down. Uh, we were talking about uh, uh, voltage dividers. Uh, this one I'm going to have to put it on and more than one position because you can see the man down below. Okay, well, I'll turn him sideways and <laughs> so you can see it. The thing is twelve is over twelve feet tall. The man is six feet tall. So that's used in your uh, mega voltages. You don't have to use that at all if you use my system of uh, magnetic fields and electro electrostatic and electromagnetic field measurements. Uh, you don't have to use that at all. Uh, okay, this is something that come, we can thank uh, Romania for this. Uh, this is from a, a translation from a book uh, in Romanian, which I have or had that uh, tells uh, what happens in magnets and uh, a Tesla coil or the center tap on the Tesla coil uh, behaves just exactly like this magnet. The block wall system there becomes the uh, negative or earth ground and that's the place where the electrons are uh, getting organized and uh, on uh, one side they spin right, on the other side they spin left and you can Take your hand and cusp it, and the direction of the apparent direction of electron movement would be like in this plane, and the spinning would be around that particular plane. And then on the other end of it, you have to reverse it, and that would be your north. This would be your north end. This would be your uh, south end on this particular thing. Now, coils uh, behave exactly like magnets. They have a more or less a north end and a south end. And uh, as far as I know, this has never been published in the English language. Uh, 
and uh, this was actually a Russian publication in Romania from back in the 30s. And we're going to see how that uh, ties together with some of the other things. Okay, this is Can you see that okay? And what I've done there, I've taken the uh, uh, tested coil with the center tap on it, and I've uh, shown what actually happens uh, uh, when uh, electrons move in one direction, the uh, uh, amperage part goes the other way. As it turns out, there's basically there's two types of electrons there. There's one that's a little bit smaller and weaker than the other. And it becomes the, when it spins, uh, uh, spins its direction, it becomes the amperage part. And the stronger of the two electrons uh, spins and makes the voltage part. And uh, in nature, they are coupled together. Uh, and that's the reason why they're inactive and uh, floating uh, about in space uh, without anything happening. It's whenever you disturb them or knock them apart that they try to get back together. And that's uh, where you get your useful energy. And they're relatively easy to disturb. You can do it either by electromagnetic methods or you can do it with the conventional uh, coils and magnet system, which is also electromagnetic. But it's much easier, much more efficient, and uh, the rate of disturbance determines the amount of energy that you end up with, which. Uh, means that 60 cycles generating at 60 cycles you're wasting your time if you're generating uh, the amount of energy output is directly related to the square of the cycles per second so at 60 cycles square that then square 218 million times a second and uh, you will see that the efficiency on my device has gone up unbelievably as a matter of fact it's gone on the chart it's gone straight out of the sky and uh, these electrons, uh, when you disturb them, they are not in any way diminished. Uh, they simply uh, will go back to their normal habits the first chance they get, and they will be there, and you can use them over and over again. You're not disturbing the uh, environment or uh, doing anything which is harmful to human beings, uh, depending on the frequency you're running at. If you're down in the lower frequencies, say, uh, down below the radio frequency, which is below 20,000, the lower you go, the more harmful the uh, environmental effects are from electricity. The uh, frequency that was chosen uh, to be the standard was probably the worst uh, possible frequency imaginable. Uh, the, uh, a better version of it is the 400 cycles per second, or actually it's 400 up and 400 down, which is 800 which would be considerably more efficient and better than the 60 cycle way of going. And uh, we see it in the electrical uh, vehicles and the uh, wiring systems and the airplanes and the servo mechanisms for controlling the airplanes, the wheels and all parts of it, including a lot of the uh, service uh, vehicles that they use at the airport. They're running it. Uh, 400 cycles a second, which means uh, uh, they're running uh, at a higher voltage. They're running like 440 at 400 cycles. And uh, the lower the cycles, the more the heat and the wasting of the energy. So the higher the cycles you run at, the less harm to human beings, the environment, and other things, and the greater the efficiency. So as you go into the higher frequencies, you, uh, it's very easy to trip over into the over-unity uh, systems which uh, we're seeing here today. This uh, illustration is in the current issue of the Tesla magazine, which uh, they have some copies in the uh, bookshop in case uh, you want to look closer at it. 
the electron is a very useful thing. It produces a number of uh, things which we normally don't uh, think about. As you can see there, uh, we have uh, two basic uh, types of uh, related energy. We have the resistance or the impact uh, and the light, the heat bill, and then we have the uh, electromagnetic uh, reaction, which is up at the top. And uh, there's methods of storing this energy without uh, disturbing or destroying the electrons. And uh, the whole uh, idea behind how this thing works uh, hinges around the fact that you can uh, take the energy without uh, uh, diminishing the electrons. Basic uh, storage uh, formulas are these, and uh, you'll notice that uh, part of the formula gets squared, and uh, this uh, takes you directly back to EMC squared or the uh, uh, things that led up to what Einstein later. Uh, put into a statement which uh, he gets credited for. Uh, the idea had been around quite a long time. As a matter of fact, if you go back to Maxwell and the people that were working early on, or sort of, er, not real early, but sort of early on, uh, their ideas about electricity are uh, almost identical to what I have in reading uh, uh, the early accounts. Uh, Maxwell would have no trouble at all uh, agreeing with everything that I've been saying. Uh, he doesn't agree with uh, what is taught in the uh, physics books here. Uh, they quote Maxwell all the time, but they only quote him uh, out of, t out of uh, text. And they quote him in such a way that uh, he's saying something which he would not have said if he was personally physically present. and. How do I know that? Uh, I've been reading the documentation done by the people that actually worked with Maxwell and some of his actual writings. The, the book that you see that's accredited to Maxwell was not written by Maxwell. And uh, uh, he probably would have had some difficulty with it. Now that we know that those uh, formulas exist, uh, let's see what they really can do. Okay, a joule, a watt second, uh, a coulomb, a farad, uh, all those things are one volt at one amp at basically one second. They're all the same thing. Uh, they're used in different statements and, and ways that appear to make them be different, but really they base one volt at one second or one watt. So that's a joule, a watt second, a coulomb, and a farad. So uh, with that in mind, half of the energy is in magnetic and half of it is in uh, electrical. So the point 0.5 there is taking care of the fact that we're using the uh, uh, electro end of it. And uh, it's half the energy that's there. The other half is in magnetic. So with that in mind, uh, we have a uh, capacitor which has a certain uh, uh, portion of... Uh, a volt. See, that's uh, like uh, if it was one volt, it would be one with the decimal point, but the capacitor is showing uh, three sets of zeros basically there with the one interspersed, which makes it 10 uh, microfarads. Okay, uh, uh, then uh, the 100,000 would be the voltage. It could be uh, any voltage. It could be 100 volts, 1 volt, or, or 25 volts, or whatever. 
and then you square that, and then you have to further uh, go to times the cycles per second. And after you've done all of that, that tiny charge that was there, each time it's cycled, it adds up, it becomes cumulative. And that's why your capacitors, even though they don't appear to have a lot of electricity in them based on the fact that, say, they're eight microfarads or whatever, uh, if you repeat that enough times in a second, it becomes cumulative, and all of a sudden you have uh, hundreds of thousands of volts that are available to you. And uh, they're available, you're outside of the system, which you were uh, to begin with, so the amperage at that point depends on the degree at which you ground that uh, capacitor to the earth. If you should touch it and touch an earth ground at the same time, it will cook you on the spot. So uh, you don't really want it to unload uh, at a very fast rate. So what you do, you choke it back with uh, dividers so that uh, only a limited amount will pass through the load which you're actually wanting to do the work for you. And uh, at that point, you have useful energy. <clears throat> and uh, here's some of the benefits which uh, give us something to think about. Um, in the world of politics and uh, uh, social mixing and that sort of thing, as far as uh, governments go and such, there are really only three basic things which uh, uh, are necessary in order for a large group of people to function. One, they have to have uh, water, they have to have food, and they have to have energy. And uh, the first two are largely solved when the third one, their energy, comes into position. They have not uh, countries as far as food and water are concerned. If they have energy, they can usually fix the food and the water problem. And uh, most of the international problems uh, as to countries which have and those that have not uh, all tie into those things indirectly. Now this particular system here uh, has, the has the ability to uh, heal those problems in such a way that they're no longer third world countries. It basically uh, makes the whole world energy efficient, uh, energy sufficient, and uh, with that in mind, uh, the food can be produced and the water would be available for drinking. Uh, you can uh, make it from salt water or you can drill water wells or you can build uh, with your electrical equipment you can build uh, reservoirs and all sorts of things so that uh, the three major sources uh, outside of politics and religion that enter into world politics would be water food and energy uh, with that in mind uh, uh, what we can do if we have some lights now uh, We'll go to these devices and I'll demonstrate them and uh, let you see what useful energy can do for you. Okay, can we have the overhead lights? We're going to stop in a little bit and I'm uh, sure there's going to be a lot of uh, interesting questions. If there aren't, uh, I'm going to be disappointed. Uh, the device which you see here uh, in the small suitcase requires an earth grounding. So I've got a one wire deal that goes into a three hole plug back there and it's using the uh, center plug or the earth grounding. If anyone has any doubts about it, they're welcome to come up and see that there's no energy coming uh, from there. Anybody want to? I can't 
hold the can't you have to put a certain amount of pressure against it in order to make it work and I can't uh, do that with chicken And I would uh, estimate that that's probably useful energy. How big is the battery that's running that? It's a 12-volt or minimum size, the smallest of the 12 volts. Do what? Four ampere hour. It's more like six, but it's a very. It's a, I use more than six amps right there. Okay, uh, uh, I think there's somebody here that brought a meter and they're going to check me out here and uh, tell us uh, how many amps this thing has and how many volts it has. If they will come up, I'll stand aside and let them uh, tell you. If anyone else would like to bring their voltmeter and amp meter, go ahead. And if anyone else would like to find out what's here. Do I? I'll have to get inside of it to, to reach with the... No, well, right here's where you're going. Just want to get inside of it. Well, let's see. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll, uh, we'll hook it on like this, maybe. You want to... Just want to measure current, then? Yeah, well, we're more interested in amps here than anything else because that's what... Uh, what uh, okay, well, let me uh, hook this one on first, and then... Uh, yeah. Check me here before you plug in. Okay, you're, you're in good shape. It's like around 20 amps common scale there. Are you okay? Yeah. I think you're okay. Okay. Okay, we, if I can touch those things there, we'll see maybe 30 amps. Uh, I think uh, we're, uh, there's something that we're not making uh, contact with here. We may not be able to measure this because I should have brought along a wire that uh, sticks out where we can. Let me see if this other one sticks out farther. Okay, we're going to put that one down there and that one up there. If I can make contact here, we'll be able to read the amperage. We're not uh, not getting contact on these, but I can tell you that uh, uh, when it's properly measured, there's uh, there's more than 20 amps, and the uh, we'll work on it. Maybe after next break, we'll have a way to way to do it. It's recharging itself as it goes. Uh, say again, please. Yeah. Uh, we're not getting contact. I don't believe. Yeah, it's not making contact. Or what you have to do is to program this thing up here. You've already programmed it? Yes. Yeah, so it's programmed correctly. Okay, I think what the problem is here, we've got too sophisticated a meter. Does somebody have a more, more simple one? But this thing is half computer and half meter, and uh, uh, we might need a more simple uh, one if someone has one. Uh, the way this thing is set up, it should. Uh, well, you're measuring the ohms, aren't you? Like go for voltage now. Well, you have to reprogram it to volt. Well, you've already done that, yeah, haven't you? Yeah, AC voltage. We're on a 20 volt scale. Mm -hmm. Well, it's got it's got a lot. It's obvious that it's got more than that. Oh yeah, yeah. It's not yeah. quite uh, quite up to par. Yeah. Okay. Well. Uh, Say again. Yeah, you know, uh, this this Let's one. Forward. Let's go for frequency then. Let's see what kind of frequency we put.
Okay, I guess we should have, should have rehearsed this part of it because uh, it's prime frequency. Those things aren't pointed enough where they'll stick down in there. Cycles, 120 hertz. 120 hertz, which is correct for 60 cycles, at 60 up and 60 down. Let me try something. Uh, let's see if these things will. I tell you what, it, does somebody have a pair of snippers here? We'll cut one of the noses off on these things. And, okay, well, let's uh, uh, do something else here. Uh, it's very obvious that we have. Uh, power and that uh, it's useful oh it popped off I'll have to put it on later uh, I can hardly hear you uh, it's uh, exactly the way you would want to see it it looks, uh, if you didn't know where it was coming from, you wouldn't. Uh... Yeah, I can plug a lot more, I can do a lot more than that. Yeah, I can uh, do all kinds of things. Uh, I can light this whole room up with it. I'm not sure I heard you. Uh, if you want to sit around and look, <laughs> if you volunteer, we'll, we'll do it. Uh, would you come up closer, please? This has a min minimum of 20 amps. Uh, uh, go. Oh, I see. Minimum of 20 amps? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, no. As a matter of fact, it, it will start kicking in on that, and it'll go up to uh, more than 30 amps. What happens is when you put a load on it, it will blink momentarily, and then it'll uh, go. It'll adjust to the next level. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you see as the first commercial application of your technology, and what time frame? Will that be available on the market? Uh, it's already there and available in a large way. And uh, the commercial applications, uh, uh, some of them are electric train system for Brazil, uh, the bullet trains in Japan, and uh, uh, there are so many different applications that you can imagine just most anything. Sir? How about an automobile? Automobile, uh, uh, one of the major manufacturers, not American, uh, will uh, maybe before the year's over have the automobile out. Are these uh, No, this is the one that I take with me when I travel overseas to visit the president or, or the emperor or whoever happens to be. Uh, I, I wouldn't because there's some proprietary information in there that uh, uh, that suitcase there, if you offered me $5 million cash right now, I wouldn't take it. Uh, it's commercially viable the way it is. Uh, you could roll it into your house and disconnect from the uh, system and uh, you would be home running free for the rest of your life. Because I'm not interested in peanuts, uh, the uh, groups which I'm connected with are interested in doing this in a large uh, manner, which uh, involves entire governments, entire countries, and uh, uh, instead of uh, taking the amount of time to talk to one person or deal with somebody on a one-to-one -one type basis, the same amount of time will cover a lot more uh, area than uh, you can... Uh, cover with the others. These bulbs uh, burn out pretty fast.
Yes, sir. Yeah, you're welcome if you want. Uh, well, uh, I encourage everybody to build their own. Uh, Do you have the plans? Uh, they're published in a, in a book that's in the, in the uh, office there. And uh, where do you want to plug in at? Down there? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just tap in down here. I'm just going to move okay. the voltage across the bank. Are these, they're, they're all parallel here? Yeah. Okay, and they're 120 volts all in parallel. Yeah, I could put bigger ones in there, but... Uh, You tell me when you're ready. So, the, the setup, you can buy these parts, each individual. Yes, if you know where to find them, you can. Uh, if you know where to locate them, you can. Yeah, that's what we need to yeah, it, where to locate them. Uh, they're very iffy, and uh, uh, it just happens that I... Can you buy these through you? Uh, no, because I don't... Uh, uh, I get too many inquiries. I get uh, maybe uh, in one week 80 people asking me that same question. Go ahead, Don. You ready? Mm -hmm. Now, is this is this actual sine wave or is it square wave? Uh, it's a modified, uh, modified square sign. square, yeah, square okay. wave. Okay. So, so your meter's calibrated. It's sine. Sign. Yeah, so this could be off. This is a Fluke 79 meter. It's regular. Um, and if you run a square wave into it, which actually I have an inverter here, this is one of the 12 volt Radio Shack inverters and it puts out a modified uh, square wave. You don't read the same voltage on square wave that you do on sine wave. And you typically measure about 100 volts and I'm getting 100 volts right on the money. So it's mm -hmm. actually running the light bulbs the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. Hey. Now you don't have a current measurement at this mo moment on the light bulbs only? Uh, we tried to do it up You've here. You've got the whole thing. you got a whole bunch of stuff on it. No, no. Yeah. yeah. What is the current right now taken by well, this boat? Uh, it's not very much right now, but what happens is when you add the load to it, it adjusts to it. Oh, you sure it would? Yeah, it will change to oh, match it. With the current. Yeah. 60 hertz right on the money. No drop. No, of course, I, I'm not tapped in. I have to split the wire to get a mm -hmm. current made. Mm -hmm. so Put the ammeter in there. Well, it but, uh, no, it's rock steady. <laughs> That's pretty good. Of course, you now, can calculate the amperage if these are operating at their full wattage, which yeah, they appear to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So you're looking at how many? Oh, you got 40 times what? Well, I can, I can put, uh, I've got some 100-watt uh, ones here. I can switch them out real quick. While now, your source is all And uh, they will, actually, those are putting out more now than 40 watts are, because, see, they're too bright. Yeah. You see, they're actually destroying themselves right now. Right. Now, it's, yeah, coming from the, like it. it's coming from the unit in the suitcase here, right? Yes. This is your the top part of the suitcase. There's, uh, the suitcase is mostly empty. Can you tap into the 12-volt battery that's being recharged there? Uh... By tapping into it, what do you mean? Can you hook this inverter, which is a regular? Well, I'm sure, sure you could. You could. Uh, you could run the same bulbs right out of the battery. Uh, you you probably, probably could, except for the fact that you're running your battery down. But the ba okay, is there a certain amount just coming back to the battery just to keep it in operation? Uh, the is battery, the battery here is recharging itself. Once this thing starts, uh, it uh, the battery doesn't uh, isn't being used. Right. Okay. How many editions of your book are out now? Uh, there's about five or six. The last? What, what, is, what edition is the last one in the bookstore? Uh, I'd be afraid to say. Five or, five or it's six? It's probably one. Huh? Probably one. Uh, somebody left me with their fingernail clippers. Well, uh, the coils there, the pretty uh, coils, uh, come from V and W, and I would have to. I don't have the address with me. The uh, PVC comes from the local hardware store. The uh, pretty orange-colored uh, multi-stranded cable there, which uh, is very helpful in this type of device, uh, comes from Gateway Electronics uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio, I think, and. Uh, 
Denver, Colorado, and Los Angeles. How, how can we get the latest edition of your book? Uh, they have copies of it if you uh, lean on them. Uh, uh, I have, in some cases, uh, sent people copies of it uh, for free. So uh, what you have to do is just keep on top of it. What, what, size, what type of batteries did you say you prefer to use? Uh, I'm using the... Uh, lead calcium uh, here but uh, okay. they have here. yeah okay. it's a lead calcium battery it's about yeah. a little bit size of one of those capacitors how, how there. long will that operate uh, it will go essentially forever forever one battery yeah the battery is not being used except to start it huh? i'm going to obtain one of these commercially uh, device. You said they're commercially available right now? Uh, it depends on what part of the world you're in. What part of the world do I have to go to? Get one? Japan. <laughs> or, uh, we'd have to give that to you later. I appreciate that. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Is this basically the design that you have in your suitcase? It's a scaled down one quarter version of it. It's a one quarter version of yeah. what's in your suitcase? Yes. Okay, can we see what's in your suitcase? No, you cannot. There are some other proprietary things there. Would it be possible to, to uh, energize this unit here? Um, but this thing is hundreds of billions of dollars in uh, money behind it, and there are people who have their money up and put on the line, and yeah. for that reason, uh, uh, there are some proprietary things which I'm not discussing, well, which really make it. Do you think Tesla is more interested in money well, or in uh, doing the right thing? I tell you what, uh, if we have a problem with that, uh, we best not discuss it because uh, I'm just wondering uh, there's, what uh, Tesla would have said. there's one way that it's, the ball is bouncing, and that's not Mr. the way Smith, which you like. In order to share with the rest of us, could we have the questions repeated by you? Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's go to a question and answer session, and I'll try to, if uh, I have a little bit of trouble hearing, so if you don't uh, speak loudly, you should come up closer. Yes, sir. What if we could, with all this technology, we could have a loudspeaker set up here? Uh, we did it. We did at one time. Uh, if uh, someone will, I think the one on the thing here comes around, doesn't it? Just take the whole thing. It's got a long cord on it. See, there's a long cord. Okay, to one of the questions which was asked me, uh, which you didn't hear, was uh, uh, which uh, do you think Tesla would think more of money or more of what the uh, device can do for someone? This device has the potential of ending uh, world conflict in its totality. So uh, the manner in which it's being applied at the present time is to build enough capital so that that goal can be pursued in such a way that nobody on earth has enough money to uh, push it down. So and that has just about happened. So at the point where it becomes impossible for anyone to uh, knock it out or can, you know, turn it down or get rid of it, at that point, well then, of course, it's available to any and everyone and all uh, Aspects, but at this point, go ahead. Yes. Uh, My question is: Now that we have the internet, uh -huh. why don't we give full disclosure on the internet? Uh, I think that way they can't put it down. Because when you have, if if you look, though, if you look uh, correctly on the internet, you will find it. You, you don't know where to look. You don't know where to look. Uh, the, uh, there's a, a disclosure enough that you can uh, do what I'm doing here, and I might tell you that what you're seeing here is obsolete. Uh, I'm a couple of light years farther down the line than what you're seeing here, but I'm doing what you're seeing because most people think that you have to have something where you just turn a wall switch on and that's it and that's to accommodate the wall switch crowd that I'm doing. The thing is actually presently a solid state device which is very small and uh, does all the things that these things do but it's a solid state device. And uh, 
you'll hear about that more in the future, but you won't hear much more here because uh, uh, I won't talk about it. But uh, it. Ben, while you're on this, uh, could you address patenting and protection, which I think is a big issue? Well, uh, the patenting, the whole patenting process is a big bad joke. But uh, you do it because uh, uh, it's customary to do that sort of thing. But uh, as far as patenting something, if you think the United States Patent Office is going to be helpful, uh, you're wasting your time for sure. But uh, the way I work it, uh, I'm keeping the ball in the air and keeping it in such a way that uh, as long as I keep the ball, it, once the patent is issued, well, then I'm open and subject to all kinds of uh, conflicts. So I don't want the patent to be issued uh, for some time yet. So basically what I do, I keep the uh, patent office uh, in a state of confusion until I get to the point where I want them to, to know what I'm actually doing, and then I, I unload on them, and I get my patent at that point. But again, uh, uh, money talks, and if I uh, do what most people would like to see happen, uh, this thing will be dead and in the, in the trash can just like it was before, and uh, I'm determined at this time that that's not going to happen. And uh, I'm very, very far down the line in that procedure. And not only that, uh, these devices are, uh, you're looking at uh, 18 and 90 type uh, stuff here. And the uh, solid state uh, versions of them, uh, uh, there's n really nothing there to see. If you saw it, you wouldn't know what you were looking at. That's basically what I can tell you. Yes. I, uh, I'm from Canada. Yes, sir. And I imagine every farmer in Canada and in the United States would love to have one of these uh, uh, on, on their farm. It would be most, most helpful. But, but I, I, like you, I'm a little bit uh, skeptical about what General Electric and Westinghouse and the big car power corporations mm -hmm. would say about yes, it. Yeah. And, of course, we do have people uh, around us that don't want peace and don't want the people to be prosperous either. They're trying to keep us into poverty and they, they make more profits out of wars. So how do we uh, get around this, like Westinghouse pretty big, and there's a lot of power companies out there that are pretty big. Uh, the power companies and the, uh, the uh, status quo uh, have a huge long-term investments, which uh, they're amortizing over long periods of time. And uh, those things are very much in jeopardy at this point. As a matter of fact, they're basically worthless or useless. And uh, uh, the automobile industry, uh, basically you could just today, uh, knowing what you know from here, uh, you can write the total automobile, American automobile industry off because the people that uh, come with the electric cars uh, based on this system will totally uh, wipe out the others. And it's not an American company that's going to do it because the American companies, uh, the attitude of the people that they have to talk to with the people like General Motors and others, uh, they look down their nose at you to begin with. And secondly, they have uh, huge staffs of people who are highly competent, and uh, they depend on them to supply them with what they need. And uh, someone from the outside is not about to upset that balance. So uh, there's no way on earth that I could uh, talk to directly with an American automobile company, but I can tell you at this point they are dead and they don't know it. Yes. Say again. Uh, would not be my first choice, and I, at this point, I can be very choosy. Why not? Uh, basically, because I don't like the attitude. If uh, if their attitude was constructive, uh, I would be all for it. But the attitude is destructive. Yes, sir. Could we have you come up the microphone and have, get your questions on so when you buy the tape, we'll have the questions on as well? Uh, Don, you mentioned that the battery itself was a six amp hour battery. Yeah, it's a cadmium, inside. cadmium the, sulfur. The cad, okay. Um, after doing a calculation with the 40 watt light bulbs, it oh. would have to burn a little over 10 minutes in order to fully exhaust the capacity no. of a six amp battery. No. 
that's according to the six amp hours. Okay, 400 watts. Well, uh, but it's recharging. We know I have, that. I have ran these things for several days at a time, and they didn't dim. Yes. So okay. It, My question is just to show the audience that, in fact, it, it isn't working the well, way you're supposed uh, to. Uh, at this point, uh, uh, I'm not going to get caught up in any uh, debate or argument. Uh, uh, what you see is what you see, and uh, if you're uncomfortable with it, well, I, I'm going to leave you that way. No, that's all right. It, is it possible to change the bulbs to the 100-watt bulbs? I have some uh, higher-powered bulbs here. It, it would, if you looked at these close, you notice that the the filaments were burning out very fast. Yes. Uh, as a I've, matter of fact, uh, those bulbs would be gone probably before we ran another 10 minutes. Right. It, the 100 watt bulbs only have to go a little over four minutes to exhaust the battery. And if it ran over four minutes, there's no question. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll do that another day. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, other questions? Do you plan to uh, energize the unit that's laying on the floor? Uh, I did not bring the proper cables to turn it on. Uh, I have had it running, and it uh, works just fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, when people come to visit me, they get a, a much better show. Uh, whenever you start bringing things out uh, uh, in the back of an automobile, and uh, you have very limited space, and uh, you have a problem uh, bringing things for people to see. I have uh, all the amp meters and everything else to prove my point. Uh, but I was thinking that uh, I would be able to use this thing, but apparently not. Yes, sir. Uh, how would, would this be a one-time purchase uh, type deal, or would, would the people be charged a, a monthly service for the, having the device, or how, uh, how would that work? Basically, I leave that up to the people that are dealing. Uh, the basic structure on a deal on this type of thing would be a joint venture. And there, there would be uh, the capital to operate it <laughs> would be 50%, and the technology is 50%. And uh, the uh, policies, uh, the joint venture, I'm the, the chief executive of it, and uh, uh, also some of the other positions. And then uh, I have people from the other side, the money side, who are in the command structure. And uh, it's kind of like a round table. They, they decide in what manner and method which it will be uh, marketed. And uh, uh, in most cases, uh, there, there have been no problems at this point. What do you, what do you see as a, a, a purchase deal? Do you, do you see it as being sold outright, or do you see it uh, um, being leased or... Or you put, mean, putting uh, a meter on it, or pitching, uh, purchasing, for example, purchasing yeah, that ride and owning it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, the best deal there is for you to build your own. Yeah. Uh, you do it with my blessings completely, and if you use some of the schematics which I have, uh, uh, you can do it. Uh, there are a number of people that have done it. You know, this device here on the floor is the same as in the suitcase, but the one in the suitcase is just downsized. Say again, please. The device on the floor is the same one in the suitcase, but the one in the suitcase is just downsized? Uh, this one quarter scale of this. So that, uh, how much would that put out? How much? Well, uh, uh, so actually, much? it will put out more than the components there can handle. The, the weak spot would be the capacitors. And the capacitors, the way they're set up, will handle uh, up to about 8,000 volts uh, at about 10 amps. Okay, your normal your normal household is a uh, is a 200 amp service. Do you, you, well, uh, you see it you've got a 200 like amp circuit, but the 200 amp circuit is your main uh, in most houses. Uh, That's with everything. In our right? house, it's a 500 amp service, but uh, in most houses, a 200 amp service would be. Uh, for the whole house, and that's divided up between 20 and, and 30 and 40 and 50 amp, and maybe uh, uh, 50 amps about the biggest uh, fuse that's in there. So a, a device like that would have to be built bigger to run everything at once? Uh, you it, know, depend, I... it depends on how you hook it in. Okay. So the fact that I'm even letting you see these things at all is violating my own personal uh, a relationship with people who have uh, large investments in this. So uh, uh, the fact that you're able to see the things as they are, uh, uh, consider that my gift to you. Sure, we appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, it should be enough to get you started on what you want to do. 
That's the idea behind it. And there are other people in the audience out here who have actually tried to build these things. And there are some that have succeeded, but uh, out of several hundred people I know that have tried it, there's only about six that have actually completely succeeded. So why that is, happens, I don't know. But why it happens, uh, there's really nothing that complicated. Yes, sir. Uh, do you have an incorporated company of any kind? Yes. Is there stock? I have uh, calling cards and uh, contacts with the International Banking Group that uh, I work with. Uh, early on in this thing, uh, uh, I had made a lot of presentations, and there were all kinds of people running at me and telling me what all kinds of great things they were going to do for me. And the uh, first few tries, it turned out when you got to the table and, and uh, the money part, uh, the money part wasn't there. And uh, that, those were American uh, people. And at uh, the same time that was going on, I had a lot of governments, uh, government officials from Japan and uh, Indonesia and uh, from the uh, Philippines and uh, uh, from, uh, from Holland. Have, you, from issued, have mm -hmm. you issued stock in that company? Sir? Have you issued stock in that company? My ears are playing a trick. I see. Have you issued stock? in that company? No, there's no stock. The way okay. it's standard operating procedure now, it's non-negotiable. Uh, uh, it's 50 percent uh, for technology, 50 percent for the money source. Uh, I'm the uh, CEO of the whole and the chairman of the whole group. And then the structure comes in underneath that. Uh, eight of the eight board members, four of which I name. and. Uh, uh, the, it, it's a joint venture company, and the funding is in, in negotiable funds. Uh, in, uh, before, uh, in, uh, that's one of the uh, requirements that, uh, for the uh, joint venture to exist. It has to be negotiable funds in the bank. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, I want to know where I can get the uh, information. Like you, you mentioned earlier, you are uh, I'm having schematic. A little bit of trouble hearing you. Oh, the, 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 your schematic. Uh, where you can find a schematic? Yes. Uh, some of the ones I was showing you there are in a book which the bookstore has. Okay. Yes, sir. We need some more questions. Uh, Don, you mentioned the, uh, the, the, the book. The, it's only five pages, but you mentioned that your original notes are many, many, many pages. Can we get a copy of those? Uh, Original. Well, uh, inadvertently, the book which they have in the bookstore right now has some of those original notes in there. I see. Uh, what happened was I left my briefcase in the bookstore, and they had it out copying everything in the briefcase. So the book that they have in there now has maybe 10 or 15 pages or more of uh, actual original notes and things in my own handwriting in okay. the back of it. Okay, the notes that uh, you read up in the uh, the magazine, the uh, uh, the science magazine that we just got out. Yes. Now, uh, <clears throat> those notes are just a fraction of the other notes. Is that well, it? Well, uh, part of what came before has pulled over into those notes, but mm -hmm. uh, if you read the article that's in the magazine. Uh, um, it doesn't have the schematics, but it discusses mm -hmm. what's going on in such a way that if you're familiar with coils yeah. and yeah. capacitors, you can build it from very, what's very, there. very easily. I'd say. Yeah, anyone who's sort of uh, conversant would be able to do that. Okay, we need another question. Uh, you had talked about you know joint ventures with industries. For example, if you were to decide to do a joint venture with the elevator industry. With, what? with an with the elevator industry uh -huh. getting these devices installed for use on American elevators, um, okay, uh, what what would that take, and what kind of capital would you be looking for? Okay, uh, if there are people who are interested from the joint venture aspect, uh, what I'm going to do is give you a calling card of a man who's involved in international banking, and he is uh, one of the group of people that took care of uh, financing this thing and getting it going. And uh, uh, he is real sharp, and uh, uh, you want to be real serious if you're talking to him, and you don't want to be talking about peanuts because uh, the uh, ticket to, to the ball game uh, starts at about $500 million. 
and it goes up uh, to several thousand times that, depending on who you are and uh, and what you want to do. Yes, sir. Yeah, is your unit uh, available for the market yet, or available for market? It's yeah, actually uh, uh, in uh, commerce in some parts of the world. But what about in United States here? United mm -hmm. States, uh, uh, you'll have to build your own. I'm afraid at this point. Oh, so is any uh, thing you can say in the near future will be available in the market or what? Uh, if you wait about six months to a year, you may start seeing these things coming in from Japan. Oh. That's too bad. Why is it too bad? Yeah, I can tell you the Japanese are quick whenever it comes to uh, seeing uh, how to turn something into money. I mean to tell you, they, they can spot it fast. Yes, sir. You mentioned that your latest device is wouldn't be recognizable from that one. The new ones, right? Yes, uh, you wouldn't. If you saw it, uh, you wouldn't. Uh, you wouldn't think that it does anything. Well, <laughs> is there must be something that is that is the same from that board? Looking at that board no, right there, uh, the, uh, the the coils, no, perhaps. No, there's no coils, and the uh, the capacitors. Uh, there's no capacitors. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I told you you wouldn't recognize it, but it becomes obvious so obvious so quick uh, once you saw it and I explain it to you. Uh, uh, right now it's like trying to explain uh, color television to uh, American Indian back in 1850s. But uh, it's, it's not uh, that complex, but the same rules that apply to what's happening here uh, told me that you could do this, do it the other way, and so I built some of them, and they worked just like the first time, absolutely perfect. And I can tell you that you can have uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of volts out of a tiny little matchbox, and that, at high amperage. No. no, the suitcase is lo suitcase is locked, and if you came even close to it or attempted to pick it up and carry it off, you you might not leave this room, ever. Could you give us an indication of what it costs per kilowatt or per horsepower to construct the equipment? Uh, Rule of thumb. I'm having trouble understanding. Could you give us an indication of what the cost would be per horsepower or kilowatt or uh, in well, the Well, of course, that depends on how much it costs to build the device. That's, that's what I mean. And, uh, you can tell from looking at it uh, probably what it costs to build. And uh, I can tell you that it's nothing like a conventional. If you have a conventional generator and you want a million uh, a megawatt, you're going to spend about a million dollars. Yes, sir. So that's about uh, one dollar per kilowatt, or yes, something like that. So these things are like uh, 30 uh, kVA. Uh, so that'd be if you uh, uh, priced it according to what the conventional source costs, you'd be charging thirty thousand dollars for this device right here. Thank you, sir. But it wouldn't be necessary to do that. Not only that, your conventional device would wear out. Uh, and you'd have upkeep maintenance, and you'd have personnel to look after it. You'd have fuel costs, and uh, just the costs go on forever uh, on a conventional deal. So that million dollars you spent to get the first device, uh, probably the uh, generating equipment itself might have a useful life of five to ten years, maybe. And you'd have to spend your money all over again, plus all the personnel and the fuel and other things. Uh, yes, sir. Any, any more questions? What you're really saying is we don't need those atomic power, atomic power any longer. No. Uh, atomic power, uh, let me explain atomic power this way. If you have a, a particle which uh, yields energy and you have to spend more getting the energy out than the energy that you get out, uh, that's atomic power. And uh, 
if in the case of the electron, uh, uh, you have to just simply disturb it, and it's relatively easy to do that. But with the atomic power, you basically have to tear the atoms apart. And uh, in the process of doing that, the equipment to do it and to generate electricity, which you end up doing with steam, uh, uh, it's sort of a Rube Goldberg way of getting energy. Yes, sir. What is the, the wattage of the unit laying on the floor? Wattage of the unit? Uh, well, you'd have to calculate that. Uh, uh, I gave a challenge to some of you a while ago on that uh, neon tube transformer thing there. If you uh, look on it, it says how much it goes into it and how much comes out. If uh, someone would come, care to come up and calculate it, you'll find that that's an over-unity device itself. It's putting out more... Uh, uh, wattage than it's uh, than you're putting into it. It's it's written on the label as to what the input is and what the output is. More questions? Yes, sir. Come, come over here. The units you're you're having manufactured now are the the electronic ones or. The no, solid state? Do they have electronic? No, they're the solid state one they, you're talking about? What's going to happen is they're all going to do it this way for a while, and then uh, uh, after uh, maybe uh, oh, two, three, five years, I might uh, bring the other thing out. But uh, indirectly, I'll bring the other thing out under uh, different operating groups. So, okay, the unit that's being uh, uh, manufactured now is like the size of the suitcase one, correct? Well, uh, the, the commercial versions, I actually showed you one uh, when we first started here. I showed you a commercial version. And if you read the name on those capacitors where they came from, you know where they're uh, being manufactured. Okay. I notice on the unit on the floor. Um, yes, sir. It appears as though the secondary is all wound the same direction. Uh, and that's different from what you, you were talking about. I saw the drawing a while ago that I put on the coil. Uh, you can wind it in a reverse direction on the bottom half or forward either. If you want to emphasize the amps, or you wind it in a reverse manner. If you want to make a transformer which produces amperage basically only and not voltage, take a, well, let's see if we can find something here. I'll show you how to make one real quick like. One that will do just amperage and nothing else. And that you can drive this amperage thing with your L1 coil. Okay, see, take this thing right here and loop it back. And then uh, uh, you wrap it, around the, wrap it around the coil form so that uh, both your in and out are down on the bottom part. And at that point, uh, uh, where these two are running parallel to each other there, it cancels out the voltage so that only amperage uh, is there and it magnifies. So you can make a, your L2 uh, uh, coil there. If you wind it correctly, uh, you can get only amperage from it and no voltage to speak of. It, just like you get, uh, say, 30,000 volts, or you can get 30,000 amps. But you don't want that because the device couldn't would melt on you to begin with. Okay, some more questions. If the ground cable is removed from your suitcase, will the unit still operate? Uh, yes, it will. Uh, you notice the screws on the top here. Uh, that's the where the thing is bolted in, and uh, it actually takes up. Uh, just the top half of the suitcase. Okay, but if you pull the actual ground cable off, that, that small black cable, uh, will it still the, operate? Uh, the ground cable is actually necessary for it to operate correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. If you take it off, uh, uh, the, uh, it starts building up heat and other things. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else could be used for ground if, if this were to uh, operate well, a car? It uh, or... is grounded into the air as it is. But if you use it for any period of time and it's ungrounded, it starts building up heat. And there was no heat uh, mm -hmm. from what we were doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's your web address? Oh, which one? 
web address you want to find it on the computer uh, actually I don't have that thing with me uh, I didn't put it on there uh, some people in Houston did and uh, some people in Dallas did and it's on the over it's in uh, Amsterdam I know because I've had people call me from Amsterdam I know that it's in England because I've had phone call a man from Croydon, England, called me the other day and was asking questions about it. So I know that it's on the Internet in Europe. I know that it's also on the Internet in Japan, but I've got phone calls from there. And uh, the Japanese television did a one-hour documentary on me uh, and showed it in February uh, throughout uh, Asia. And uh, I got a lot of phone calls from that. Uh, it's PBS-type uh, uh, deal. The, uh, there's a professor at the Technical University of Tokyo that's a good friend of mine uh, who's uh, recommending me for the Nobel Prize for this thing. There's another uh, person like that in, uh, in Amsterdam, and one in England that's uh, doing it, and then there's also several other people that are involved. But there's, uh, this has Nobel uh, impact from the... Uh, uh, explanation of what the electrons are doing this business of having electrons coupling and being uh, disturbed and pulled apart and they have to fight to go back together and when they come back together you have uh, volts times amps equal watts and that is an extension of J.J. Uh, Thompson's uh, description of the uh, electron originally and it's expanding onto it and there's some other things there and that is Nobel Prize uh, material and the fact that we were talking about the peace effect of this uh, between nations uh, making energy available commonly and very economically to all people in the world uh, also means that they can produce food and uh, they can uh, take care of their water problems. So it solves uh, three major world problems. So that is Nobel uh, Prize material right there. And it goes on and on. Yes, sir. Uh, what do you call your system? What's the name? What do I call the company? No, the, the, the name of the system. The system? I just call it uh, an energy system. Very so simply. I'm trying to find it on the net, the discussion that they have, what they call it, what, 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 what type of, how, what category? Yeah. It's a resonant induction energy transfer. Resonant induction energy transfer. Uh, your magnetic changes to electricity, your uh, electricity in turn changes to magnetic, and that's how they talk to each other. And uh, uh, when they, depending on the, what the electron is doing will determine whether you've got electric or magnetic. Did you have anything against the camera? Scan the head so it can be put on the video. People can see a good shot of that. You want to see it on the video? Uh, he can zoom in on it. Uh, what I'll do is take it and uh, it's a little bit heavy, but uh, we'll take it here. Which way do you want me to turn it? Yeah, but he can he can zoom in on it and, and come in in any detail he wants to, I'm sure. Well, uh, I'll turn it around in a little bit and turn it some different angles. Uh, I'll hold it for just a little bit in, say, this position, and then I'll turn it at a different angle so that uh, you can see it. There's a lot of printed information on the device that you're using. It's not going to yeah, well, the printed information on the capacitors won't do you any good because they're custom run uh, for Cornell Duvier for me, so. Uh, You'll have to find your own, uh, but they won't be a custom run. How about the, the transformer? The transformers, uh, uh, you can find that at any uh, <coughs> supply for uh, neon tubes. Yeah, I'm still waiting for that person to come up and calculate uh, what's reading on the label of the uh, high voltage uh, transformer. Because uh, it's actual printed and it uh, tells you that it's an over-unity device right there. It doesn't say that in words, but if you calculate what they put on there, they have printed uh, their test results from that uh, high-voltage transformer, and it comes out uh, considerably more than what went in.
Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put it down, and uh, we can continue with the questions if you like. Yeah, since uh, approximately 1850, 1875, the days of Maxwell, Henry, and Faraday, the electromotive formula has been written I is equal to E yes. divided by R. Yes. Your device clearly suspends the balance of that equation. My question to you is how would you rewrite the equation how do you to, rewrite? to explain the excess energy that's being okay, uh, produced by your device? If you read uh, the early uh, uh, printings from Cavendish Laboratory in England, uh, who was, they were, the people there were connected with uh, Maxwell, and if you read the uh, books and the printed material that was occurring at the time that uh, Thompson did his work on, uh, on the electron and that uh, uh, Hertz uh, did his thing and the other people, you'll find that uh, Maxwell uh, actually didn't uh, think the way that uh, he's presented at this time. That uh, Maxwell, actually the thinking of Maxwell is almost exactly what I've been telling you in my written material. So what Maxwell supposedly, uh, what they put in shorthand form to illustrate uh, what was happening uh, was very much in doubt at the time that it was done. And there was serious doubt and I can show you in print where a number of people who were uh, heads, headmasters for uh, uh, in Cambridge who wrote the books and things at the time that uh, Maxwell was coming along expressed serious doubts about uh, the shorthand methods of which uh, things were uh, uh, presented. Okay, we need some more questions. I'm sure there must be a lot more. Uh, it's going to be difficult for me to respond to you once we get away from here because of the number of people that uh, I see we have some new light bulbs. That's perfectly fine. Yes, sir. Is that okay if we hook them up? Yeah. Why not? Why not? I'll be glad to burn your light bulbs out. <laughs> I had some back of the thing here. You didn't have to go get them. These are 100 watt light bulbs. Uh, These are 40 watt light bulbs. So they, I mean, 40 watt. I tell you why they were what they are because uh, what you're fixing to do is burn this man's uh, camera out over here. I hope not. I hope uh, not. That's exactly what you're fixing to do. Because uh, uh, unless he's got a, a shield on there to protect it, uh, when this thing comes on, uh, your camera won't be much use after that. you have some kind of filter that uh, uh, you can work with uh, because uh, this thing is going to knock your camera out. Uh, it's going to knock your camera out when I turn turn the turn these lights on. We can bump it. Do what? We can turn it down. Okay, well watch it because... Uh, Turn it around or what? Okay. Uh, they, he wants you to move back uh, uh, so that he can take a picture, picture of it. Now what I'm going to do is kind of tilt this uh, sideways a little bit so that uh, he's going to be able to see if you're hooked up. Ready. Okay. Hey, 
much to read. A little drop in voltage is about 64 volts, 65 volts, which translates to something near about 100 uh, on the AC, and it's, it's taxing it a little mm. bit. Now, it'll correct itself. It will? Yeah, it's coming up. 668.8. Wow. Are you impressed? <laughs> Good. What's it reading now? It's 68, still holding steady. Uh, it'll come up. Uh, it eventually will come up to about 112, maybe. No, that's just this is calibrated for sine wave. But uh, you have to correct this reading, which he's got, because uh, okay. he's reading a different uh, method. Yes, sir. I can be answering questions while this is going on. Okay. Um, you mentioned that there's a battery in the suitcase unit that's being recharged by the power from the system. Yes. Um, could that battery be replaced by capacitors? Yes. It, in part, it really is because the uh, what's it doing? Frequency is still steady at 60 hertz. Voltage is dropping though. I don't know if I want to mm -hmm. keep on going. I don't want to burn up the suitcase. That's not going. Uh, are you sure? The uh, circuit in here will start heating if it's overloaded. Okay, it's hard. It's, it, the voltage is dropping. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's down 58. Mm -hmm. 61, 62. Yeah, I may have to do some uh, adjustments on it. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Yes. I feel com more comfortable now. <laughs> okay. It turns out that could I, could I explain just what we did there? Yeah, sure. With the hundred watt light bulbs. Want to talk to the mic there? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We've got uh, basically a thousand watts there going on. Right. With a thousand watts of light bulbs there, that twelve volt battery inside the suitcase would have to put out about eighty three amps of current. I don't know. Have anybody taken a battery about that big and drawn eighty three amps out of it? No. You can only do it for a very short period of time. We were running over three minutes with that, and there's no way that that battery could do what we just saw. But it did it. Thank you, Don. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Yeah, my question about the capacitors, about replacing the battery with capacitors. Well, actually, the two things are, do somewhat the same thing. A capacitor and a battery serve somewhat the same purpose. A capacitor actually does it better than a battery. Mm -hmm. So it would, be, it would be possible then to just replace the battery with capacitors? Uh, in power correction systems, uh, it's a capacitor bank, and if the power goes off, the uh, energy is there, and it uh, continues on even though the power is off. Yes, sir, I think we need some more questions. You're going to take your bulbs back? <laughs> no, that's fine. You have to. No, I, I've, I've got a set over here. We just ran out of time, I've been told. Can I ask mine? So we thank you very much. We, uh, we will have further questions and discussion out in the hallway. Uh, so you can, uh, you can keep discussing out in the hall. We're going to be uh, changing setups, and there's, there's two things happening at once. Uh, George Wiseman is going to be setting up for this afternoon at 1 o'clock. He's going to start his workshop. And then also, uh, while he's doing that, Dolores over here is going to be doing a uh, short uh, kind of informal presentation in front of all